Hey there, I want to uh, talk about capoing at the second fret. The, um, oftentimes, um, I, I'm more likely to grab the capo to get out of bad keys, like you know F and D and E flat and A flat, keys that don't have really any open strings um, on the acoustic guitar in the open position. So I'll grab the capo, and like we talked about before, in the key of um, E flat or, or A flat, I might capo at the first fret and use D shapes, you know, cor uh, uh, chords in the key, key shape of D and chords in the key shape of A. So this is real simple to play, it sounds better. Um, if it's simple to play and you're not having to do a lot of bar chords and stuff, you're gonna make, you know, make the music a little bit more beautiful that way. Um, still wanna have the skills on doing the bar chords, don't want you to not learn those skills, that's very important. Today I'm gonna talk about the point the second fret, which is a little less common for me because of the fact that it's, it's not really getting me out of any bad keys. Um, if I were to use D shapes, that would be the same thing as playing in the key of E. And if I were to use G shapes at the second capo to the second fret, it would be the same as me playing in the key of A. And A and E are both keys that are pretty guitar friendly. But um, E is a big key, and consequently has a big sound to it. And if you don't, want, if you want to play in the key of E, but you want more of a, of a smaller sound or a more intimate kind of sound than the key of E capo to the second fret, so you're using D shapes is, a, is a, sometimes a better is, is a better way to go. So let me just talk about. Um, remember we did this before, where I just gave you the the actual names. What it looks like is one thing. It looks like a D chord, but it's actually an E chord. And you try to learn the names of them as they actually are, not what they look like. That way you're not technically transposing, but you're actually learning your fretboard slowly, you know, fret at a time. Um, so here we're going to be at the um, at the, the second fret, make a D shape, and that's an E chord. Okay? So if I say play E, you would go. Alright, now let's play a G shape, and that's an A chord. So here's A. This would be A7, because it's just like a G7 shape, but it's an A7. So all the, the suffixes will be the same. Like here's E, E major 7, E7, E6. Okay. There's G shape, and it's actually an A. A major 7, A7, A6, A minor 6. Okay, so play E. Play A, play an A shape, and that's B. So that would be B sus, that would be B minor, that would be B2, okay? E, A, B, B sus. Okay, now play a B minor shape. That's technically C sharp minor. Okay, now you might not, you might not even have to learn how to transpose that one because you can see it as a bar chord, you probably would play this and go, oh, that's C sharp minor. But sometimes when you start thinking you're in open position and you're really not, that can be uh, kind of confusing and you can think this is B minor and then this is B and you're like, wait a minute, my head's going to explode. So uh, play E, C sharp minor, B, A, and then play E minor, that's F sharp minor. Okay. If I had my pinky here on the second string, it would be F sharp minor 7. Um, we could do a C shape, that would be D. A C2 shape would be D2. Again, the suffixes don't change. Um, so this would be like A over C sharp. D2, A over C sharp, B minor, A to, to E. Alright, um, now one trick I like to do when I am capoed in in this position, and like I said, this is a it's a totally different sound of E than if I were playing in open position. And part of the problem with E is that we have a B chord, and that's a that's a tough bar chord to make. You should be able to do it, but that being said. As good as that E sound, nice big E, the B chord goes becomes a full bar chord, and you have on the E chord you have three open strings out of six, and on the B bar chord you have no open strings. So here we have 
one open string with this E shape. If I make it a E2, I've got an open shape there. And I go to B sus, and now I've got two open strings there on a B chord. Or if I go to like a B2 chord, I have three out of five strings are open. Okay. And we go to the A chord. And we can do all the fun stuff that we do to G, we can do to A. So that's kind of cool. Um, that's another reason. To so this would be uh, this would be A over, or E over G sharp. So your normal D over F sharp chord would be E over G sharp. So third is a G sharp, F sharp minor. Okay, I'm just kind of just going ram rambling around on this. But let me let me just give you a little test here. Play an E chord. Okay, if you play this, good job. If you play this, no, nope, that's F sharp. So there's an E. Okay, play an A chord. There you go. Play a B. Play a D. Now that was a tough one because I only showed you that one once. That's a D chord. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Um, all right, play uh, a C sharp minor. And how about F sharp minor? Okay. So the key of A is very easy, which is just using G shapes. There's the one, four, five in the key of A. Basically a G shape, which is A, a C shape, which is D, a D shape, which is E. There's your one, four, five in the key of A. In the key of E, we would use D shapes, and it would be D shape, which is E, a, sh a G shape, which is A, and an A shape, which is B. And there's our one, four, five. Okay. Now another trick, one of the problems with that E, the nice thing about it, it's nice and intimate. Um, the the downside is that you lose that low tonality. The low E string, so that's why I pull, use the ki Kaiser Kaipo. If I if uh, if I use the the uh, shove, I can do it maybe with a shove. This is actually a banjo shove. So, um, but and here's a page capo. It won't work with that. But I can take a Kaiser capo and I can flip it around upside down and capo from below the strings, and go with and just capo the top five strings. So the bottom strings open. So now I have see now I have an E chord. where I can use the D shape and get the nice use those kind of a little things on the D shape. And then here's A shape, which is which is B. Here's the G shape, which is the A. I still have that low. Now the hard the hard chord to make is the uh, minor, the F sharp minor, because I gotta reach over the capo and, and press down that F sharp. Okay, or I could just play a a five string um, F sharp minor chord, which is the E minor shape. So it's kind of the best of both worlds when you capo um, just the five of the six strings, leaving the six string open. Okay, so it's kind of like having a partial capo. There, there are some uh, capos that have a, a cutout section here. You can get it so that it, you can capo this way. I think Kaiser makes one uh, where you capo this way and it it leaves the bottom string open, okay? And that's also nice. And if you if you want to be able to fret that second fret, you can pull the capo pretty far back. Like, when I put it this way, I put it pretty close to the fret like I normally do. But I could put it there, and now I've got plenty of room to grab. I don't have to reach over the capo. You can see that. But capo doesn't work as well when it's not up against the frets. And we've got to make sure we don't hit the E string. And that's the other problem, too, with the capo is that uh, particularly when you're using a, this kind of capo and you're just kind of moving it down a little bit, is if you hit the E string too hard, it will buzz. It's, it'll touch that, the very tip of that capo and kind of buzz. Okay, so I hope this helps a little bit. I just want to encourage you to to use the capo, but also to learn your fretboard and learn all the chords up and down the fretboard, um, and not just transpose all your all your music and change the names of the chords so that you can think G shapes or D shapes. D shapes. I want you to be able to actually know what chords you're playing and not what shape you're playing. Okay. I uh, hope that helps. God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>